Okay, my friends, this is going to be a trip. This is the American Museum of Natural History, and they're talking about the Greek giants. And they say before there were any humans on Pelin, the story goes that a battle was fought between the gods and the giants. No humans yet, no humans at all. Traces of the giant's demise continue to be seen to this day whenever torrents swell with rain and excessive water breaks their banks and floods the fields. They still find these huge bones. And this was written by Solinus in A.D. 200. So even back then, they only thought there was big boned giants. They didn't realize the ones Enoch talked about were real. And on top of that, listen to this. All right, now, I was going to do this anyway. I'm glad that this popped up. Because there's a, Apollodorus was a Greek historian. And he wrote about the myths that we all thought were myths. And this was a 150-ish B.C. That's before Christ. And the things he wrote about are, are absolutely stunning and amazing. And he talks about exactly about the stuff about Uranus, the sky, and Gaia, the earth, and having her children being swallowed by the earth and stuck inside of her. And I mean, it's just unbelievable. And we're going to go over all this stuff. But this is what makes everybody think it's crazy. Now, even back then, listen to the seeing is believing. This is in Tangier, Morocco. The people that lived there once boasted that their city's founder was a giant named Arteus, Arteus, who was buried in a mound south of town. To test the claim, Roman soldiers dug into the mound 81 BC. So this is, this is long ago. They still didn't believe it. Much to their surprise, an enormous skeleton surfaced which they then reburied with great honors. Modern scientists confirm that ancient elephant fossils are common in that area. See, this is how they explain everything. See, elephant bones are cyclopses. All right, this is how they handle everything. They're talking about Zeus's thunderbolts and Hades' invisibility helmet and Poseidon's tridents all being forged by the cyclopses. And then they say dwarf elephant skulls in the center of these dwarf elephant skulls, there were animal trunks attached, but ancient Greeks may have interpreted the large trunk as opening of massive single eye sockets of a cyclops. Everything is like that. And I'm going to tell you one thing right now, American a Museum of Natural History, that wouldn't even qualify as a tick to the creatures I've discovered. All right, I'm going to cut right to the chase. It all started this way. Sky was the first who ruled over the whole world. And having wedded the earth, he begat the first hundred-handed, as they are named, Briarius Gaius Cotus, who were unsurpassed in size and might, giants each of them having a hundred hands and fifty heads. After these, earth bore him the cyclopses to wit, Argus, Sterophus, Brontus, of whom each had one eye in his forehead. But then sky bound and cast into Tartarus, a gloomy place in Hades, as far distant from earth as earth is distant from the sky. And again he begat children by earth, to wit, the Titans as they are named, Ocean, Ocean, Coleus, Hyperion, Crius, Iapetus, and youngest of all, Kronos, also daughters, the Titanides, as they are called, Tetris, Rhea, Themis, uh, Numus, I forget about it. Phoebe's, Dion, and Thaya. Now, listen to this. 
Earth had to keep eating her children. Now, let me cut right to the chase after the fact of the battles between the gods. All right, this is, this is what it says. This is what it says. When the gods had overcome the, these terrible monster giants, Earth was still enraged. And it was more enraged. And it ended up having intercourse with Tartarus, which is basically the same word as hell. As hell. And they, it brought forth Typhon. All right, this is the giant dragon that's in Morocco. It was a hybrid between man and beast. In size and strength, he surpassed all the offspring of Earth. Now, don't forget, this is Earth having intercourse with Tartarus. This is the whole Earth. So, he was good size. And he surpassed all the offspring of Earth. So, as far as his thighs and his legs, his thighs go, he was of human shape. Yes, and I can show you that. And of such prodigious, gigantic bulk that he outtopped all of the mountains. He always topped taller than all the mountains. And his head often brushed the stars. His head it was, if he was standing up, he would have been way taller than twice or three times as high as the space station. One, this is one of his hands reached out and the other to the east and from the, them projected a hundred dragon's heads. Now I found some, oops, some things, but not a hundred of them. Anyway, from the thighs downward, he had huge coils of vipers which when drawn out reached to his very head and emitted a loud hiss. His body was all winged, unkempt, hair streamed on the wind from his head and cheeks. Fire flashed from his eyes. Such and so great was Typhon when hurling kindled rocks he made for the very heaven with hissing and shouts, spouting a great jet of fire from his mouth. And the gods were terrified of him. He was the biggest thing on earth. And here's Typhon. Okay, this is the dragon. All of North Africa. Here's Spain. There's the cut in his dragon's throat. Atlantis was down in here, and they showed the ships coming in. This was, there's a, a great documentary on this map, and there's a lot of detail here. Uh, at any rate, this is from 1375. They knew about the dragon. They knew about all this stuff. The Red Sea, and they knew who ruled what, and you know, all of this. A lot of detail here that I don't have any possibility of translating. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to tell you right now. There's a gigantic fish and a gigantic dragon, just as I showed you, that was on the map with his throat cut. I am going to highlight this closer up so you can see it, because it's a little obscure. And it's, it's, it's spectacular to the average human mind to, to even think to, to, to consider it. I understand that. Okay, here he is. Here's Typhon. Outlined, and I'm going to wipe all this off in a second. This is his head. He had a, a red flaming eye, which I will show you. It was all unkempt and flashy and, you know, all... Like it said, you know, hair and feathers and all kind of things just streaming off his body. This is his throat right here with a blue line. It goes all the way down. This is the scales that are right up close to the throat because all of this is runoff. This is runoff from a dead, decomposing body. This, however, is not. This is the the beards that they have on dragons. They usually show them as white. I didn't have white to put on here. So I'm showing it as red, but there's two beards, one coming this way and one coming this way. And one of them looks like it's spitting out all these toxins and it's spitting it onto something down below. I'll show you in a minute. But this is the, the head. This little flashy stuff, you see how cool that is? I'm gonna come up close to a lot of this stuff in a minute and show you exactly what it is. But 
This in the dragons in the parades, they always have that little stripe going down and this little flashy looking stuff like that. Now, right down there, the dragon's throat is cut exactly where it shows on the map from 1375. They've known about this stuff. It's not as, there was no secrets back then. It was right on the map. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, get ready. I'm going to make this disappear right before your very eyes. Whew, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Come on, get out of there. Orange is tough. Okay, now, so what do we have now? We have the actual creature they called Typhon. He was the offspring of Earth and hell. Alright, so I showed you what he looked like. There's his red flashy eye. Let's just look at that first. You see it? There's his red flashy eye. That's kind of red and flashy for just laying there in the middle of the desert. Now, what about his nose? Here's his nose right there. And there, the mouth is obscured because of whatever this spit is out of here or he threw up or I don't know what. Because remember I told you about the beards? Here's the two beards. That's one of the beards. And there's the other one. See them coming right down out of here? And they, this yellow strip going down, this yellow one going down is the source of the toxins. You see it spitting down through this hole? That's coming down and feeding this this one of the beards and that beard is spitting out all of that toxin that's dragon venom that's the fiery dragon venom now did it combust over here with his whatever's coming out of his mouth it looks like there's some serious chemistry going on I don't know I don't know but this is what was coming out of his mouth right here. Now did that mix in with that other chemistry? Uh, it, it does appear likely. But I'm telling you, this is this is a chemistry set. Unbelievable. Look at that nastiness. Now, so what else did I say would be here? The throat and the scales. Well, let's look at the throat. I'm going to point it out and then we're going to dig right in close. Remember there's his head. All right, and again, you have you Google Earth, so there's no, I'm not hiding anything here. I don't have any special access to anything you don't have. There's his throat. You see it going all the way down? It's just unbroken throat going all, until it gets broken badly. Now, right here is the scales that protect that throat. This is all just runoff of dead, decaying body fluids, effluents, they call it. So let's go back in here and look at that throat. All right, here's the throat. It's a throat. <laughs> and what's happening here? These are scales. Now, up around his neck, it's all floppyish, which you expect. That's what, a, a, you know, necks are a little more floppy in your throat area. And then when you get into the nice clean area you start running into real clean looking scales but up here they're kind of floppy-ish and you see them but then all of a sudden they take on a very very solid look to them they're still floppy here a little bit floppy here and then all of a sudden boom we're into solid armored plate and they're hinged See him? So he can move his head and neck around. But they're damn sure scales, I can tell you that. And they run off in between, yes, because there's all kinds of decomposition. And again, this is all just decomposition of bodily fluids. Blood, different types of bloods. Minerals that leak out of the body, you see it? There's no body here. This is just what's run off of this dead, decaying creature. 
And that happens in a crime scene, too. They see it exactly identical. So look at this stuff. Identical. Identical. Black and red from arteries and veins. So now here we are running down, running down, running down through his throat, down his throat, down his throat. Still all the, you know, scales are protecting his throat. However, right down here, he got whacked. All right. This is the one that killed him. This is the cut. Right here, you see it? Right across there. That's the one that killed him. And he bled out in the desert. You see all this stuff? That's all blood running off of this in, in huge quantities. And I will show you the green growth, which always grows from red blood. Because he's right in the artery. There's all the red blood and there's the black blood. Now, it said that Zeus, with his great, great and mighty sword, which were thunderbolts, apparently, cut Typhon's throat and killed him. And his throat is cut. There's no question about that. Right there. That's a gash. You see? These were all scales. They're supposed to be like this. They're supposed to be just like that. Well, guess what? Not here. And that's because somebody went pew! Or pew! One or the other. But it split that throat wide open. Wide open. All the way from here up. See? Same thing up here cut right through. That was a serious whack. Now, where does it issue out into the desert? Right here. What do you, what do we, what's this green? What's all going on with that? That's very, very green. Well, why would it be green like that in the middle of Z desert? Well, it's because of red blood. Red blood makes things grow green as green could possibly be and this my friends was from an artery cut and it's draining still to this very day the chemistry of red blood hematite a lot of iron and so forth now here's where the red blood is you see this is the remnants of the red blood this is all things growing the algae and plants and they love the, the red blood they love to grow in the red blood you see all these little plants and things growing in here you don't see that where the black blood is black is all totally different the black blood which is the vein blood doesn't have any of the nutrient value of the red blood that's why there's nothing growing out here this was all tissue layers of some sort at one time. I'm telling you, the earth, exactly as Jesus Christ said, is a body and a corpse. And that's a dragon right there. That's where the cut is on that big, beautiful map right there. Now, he goes all the way across here. There's your, these are the thighs. Remember it said he had the thighs of a human? Here's the thighs. Here's his body right there. This is his whole body. Here's his thighs. And then it coils around here. And the coils, they said, were absolutely enormous. And this is the actual skin that was on those thighs, uh, on all those co uh, coils. That's skin. That's a hide. You understand the difference between sand dunes and leather? Why aren't you looking at it? If you go to a tanning, a guy that does tanning on leather or whatever, I mean, it's, just, it's pretty damn obvious. Those are like the little sweat porish things. So let's come back out here and just finish up with Typhon. Here he is. That, that, that's his coils. The coils attached to his thighs, which were human size. And when he stood up, his head would brush the stars. Absolutely, no question. And his tail runs all the way out to here. This is the fluty stuff at the end of his tail. If you want to look, you can look careful. But these are still the dragon scales coming all the way down here. And they're bleeding off transition metals. You see these colors? Those are transition metals. 
This thing has some serious armor. And it was avian, and you know how I know it's avian? Not just because of all the fluty bird looking stuff. Alright, it's because it has a cloaca. And you say, oh Roger, what's a cloaca? Well, it is how birds poop. And it's right here. And there's a lot of fertility where you have poop. Now, this right here is where the poop comes, right here. And it mixes in with this yellow right here, the two of them together. You see it right here. And what's the yellow all about? What's going on with that? That's coming down from the the uh, urinary tract. So the two of them join together right here. And that's where you have people living because there's a lot of fertility there. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, just, it's a fertile area. But it's also the where the thing poops. It's just like when you see bird poop, it's black and white together. That's because they mix the two together. It's, that's a cloaca. And the thighs, and the skin, and the coils, and then the fish being attacked. Now, I say the fish is swimming this way because it's thin. I mean, it's, you know, the little um, scales are going this way. So that means the water goes off. If he was moving through the water this way, the scales would open up. So he's going this way. I believe that's his eye. This, I don't know for sure what's going on there. But I believe this was his eye. That's the fin being attacked by the, by the dragon. How they get this gigantic in this area, I have no idea. Now, I also believe all this happened, this attack and everything, quite likely, all the same day. I have no idea. But I believe that's Atlantis, as they showed in that, uh, um, you know, showed ships coming in. This is a straits right here. And they said Atlantis was right outside the straits. All right, and that's a straits, which would have given them access to this ocean. It looks like to me that was the only access into the Sahara Ocean, which would have made them fabulously wealthy, which they were. And it ran out right over the top of Atlantis and wiped it out in one day, Plato said, totally gone. And all this washed out and created the Cape Verde Islands. You see how it's all piled up here and then it's coming around this way and coming around that way? See that red? doesn't go away easy. Anyway, th this is, to me, this is un unquestionable proof that what they wrote about was true. Now, when you go back to Apollodorus and you read that from start up to where Typhon is, it, it, before Typhon, it's just unbelievable. But it, it, now, the statement in, I believe it's the Bible, says there were ty there was giants in the ground, or in the earth. No, let me start again. There was giants in the earth in those days. And then after that, when the sons of God, which were giants, went into the daughters of man, they had more giants. And Enoch said they were two and a half miles tall somewhere in that area, which is, yeah, absolutely. No question whatsoever, I believe. And there's some of them bigger, some of them smaller, but, but a lot of them that same size. And then what happened was Zeus decided he was just going to start it over, wipe everybody out, and he sent Venus to destroy the earth. And it basically did wipe out almost all the giants. But you've got to read through the whole thing, and you've got to read all of the ancient texts. There's, there's a whole lot of them. Every one of them basically has the same story. A little bit of twist here, a little twist there, just exactly like it is today. Not everybody's going to say the same words about the same thing. But if you read enough words about the same thing, you begin to understand what the, the correct words were and what the reality was. And I'm, this is reality, I'm sorry, if you can't see it, well, that's not my problem.